Hi there! Welcome back to Gadget Mad Lad. <laughs> uh, right, well, in this one, probably talk about the heading, it's a new way of doing a DSM macro, but not necessarily an easier way. It might make it a little bit easier. Right, I'll run you through the, my process. First things first, the trouble with the. Right, first things first, actually. This is a normal DSi motherboard with no alterations to it. This is a DSi motherboard with the game cap slot removed. This is what my, I've been doing my macro with up to yet. I modelled it on this originally, but you see on this one there's, a bit more, there's more space up here because there's a cat, cartridge slot's missing. The plan is to remodel this and do it so I can it, it, it integrate a speaker into it as well. It's got like a homemade PCB, that's essentially what it is. Uh, so I'll, I'll use this as an example for now. So if you look here, we've got some enamel wire. It's a piece of plastic essentially, that's what I need to show you. Right, so this it's like a packaging, you know, like um, you get like a, I don't know, headphones or sale boxes, I think as well. Like some various things. It's just like I think there's a name for it, Perspex maybe. No, it's not Perspex. It's plastic of some kind, really thin packaging anyway. I've got some slightly thicker stuff. That's what I made this stuff out of. But uh, that's sticky back foam to hold it down. But the point is, there's another one I've made. The, it, it itself, kind of perfectly. If you look there. It perfectly aligns, you know, if you've got the wire, kind of, and the, hook, the resistor in place as well. It, oh, it puts it in place. This is the prototype that I made. This was the first one I made. This is one I'm going to install in this video, so I'll show you how to install it. Got the, the wires, the ends of the wires tinned as well. But it, essentially, this isn't going to make, you still got to do the same soldering, but hopefully it should make it a little bit easier. My plan was, if you solder this one first, then you remove the tape and stick it down, that should be well and truly firmly stuck down then. Then you can sort of come in with this one, solder it around and jobs are good in. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So I hope you're going to enjoy this <laughs> and let's get down to it. Right, so these obviously, I don't know if this is necessary to, ne necessary, necessarily, uh, whatever. I don't know if this is needed to boot up, but we'll, we won't leave it to chance because I want to see if the macro works on a lot of ways. Short time, I've got my screws there ready to do. I'm only making one obviously, so all right. So I'll run you through what I did. Right, so with me soldering iron, I essentially I cut it to, to shape with some scissors first of all. Then with my soldering iron, I scored you know holes in it with it kind of thing. Then I threaded the enamel wire through. I put the uh, 330 ohm resistor here, you know, so it's not going to shock against anything. Well, I've hoped it wouldn't anyway. Um, and I, I put solid tape over over it uh, to kind of you know try and pin it down, but that didn't work very well. So <laughs> it's only on this bit. Of, you know, stopping it from any shots or anything like that. It's enamel wire, so it shouldn't really shot. You need to scratch it, you know, to make it exposed to get a connection or whatever. So uh, these maybe potentially could be something hazardous. So that wouldn't be the worst idea. I'll do. I'll get my solid tape. Where is it? Hit. Right, so the enamel solid tape. Nothing special. It'll ground it nevertheless. It's just to, in case anything comes in contact with it. You get me? I don't know, should have thought I hadn't done this. So it's just one little piece of solid tape. Uh, scissors there. Oh, crap. Speakers everywhere, sticking to stuff. So it's a little bit of solid tape. We'll do, we'll just stick that over there like so. Little snip there. Little snip there. <laughs> Feel cut that is. Uh, same daily over here. Little snip there. Little. You probably can't even see that, can you? Since I've just cut the solid tape around it, so just giving it some kind of protection. It's not very good solid tape to be honest. I should use ground bin tape really for this, but I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing, you know, so you can understand what I'm talking about. Because a lot of people ask where it is your solder to, so I have, my hope is with this, it should make it very simple. Because you've got like with this one there, that's your path that you would be sticking it on with glue or tape or whatever. My thought this way was you could make it look a little bit more tidier. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's essentially the normal way of doing it, but cable management, essentially. So, move this one to the side, because it's not the one we're doing it on. It's this one. This is what I was saying to you. Um, I need to do a adjustment to the design, you know, so I can make it so I can put speaker, or at least one speaker anyway. I was going to try and do, you remember the DSi very loud speaker that I did? 
Um, I was going to do that to this, but there's not going to be enough space inside, so... Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to solder this into place, and then once I've got it soldered into place and stuck down, I'll hold it up to the camera really close so you can see exactly where on this side we're soldering to. Because right now, it's, this is a, as you probably know if you tried this yourself, it's a very awkward joint to make. So that's why I've done it like this, so I can get it in place and then I can apply the tape and that should hold it in place for the other side. Crap. I think that's good. Let's hold it up so it seems to be good enough. <laughs> so, you know, I can't tug on it too hard because usually you do the tug test, you know, you solder something, you get a little kind of yank, and if it comes loose, obviously, you know, you're not sending it properly, uh, told it properly. This one, I'm quite confident that's gonna be okay. So, line it up correctly for starters. As you can see, there's nothing spectacular. I could probably do a lot better when I do the redesign, you know, how to hold it in place. It's mainly just to stop it. You know, from going here, then everywhere, you, since you've got the exact wire you need here, so I'll cut exactly to size. So if I do, right, so what I'll do, I'll get it stuck down, and then this is just, um, in a second, this stuff, pre stuck to it, so I could stick it down as needed. This is a pain in the butt to grip the edges of it. Okay, the hell's happening? Oh, there we go. It's been a pain in... Oh, crap. That's what I'm saying, see, it comes loose with me. That's not gonna work so well. Right, so I need to resolder that now. But the stickiness is still sticky. I know you, you can't see it clearly, but like I said, I'll hold it to the camera any second. Need to get a steady connection. I think the solder's come off on the little on her legs. Oh crap. I was gonna say if I had it then but I think that's good. Hopefully I don't come away from placing that because I think that's just stuck down to the board. Yeah, it seems to be good. Oh! <laughs> Right, so what I'll do, to make sure I get a nice clear shot of it, if you look right here, where my thumbnail is, right next to this chip's little, whatever the hell that is, that's where the leg goes, that's the leg that the one side goes to. Right, so uh, how, how long in I've only just got the insulation, half, half done. <laughs> well, by half done I mean there's literally just one more wire to solder in place, which is on this side here. If you see there, where it says CL8. See the little pad directly above the 8, little silver circle? That is the pad that we're solving this to. So, bend it around like so. Get into position. So, it's better to come from an angle to an interview. Coming from an angle, it should give me take up a little bit of slack that's there as well. I think it was a bit of a pain in the butt getting it into place in the first place, if you get me. 
So if I, I'm going to come down the camera, because it's really tiny. You know what I mean? It's going to be hard as hell to get on camera at the same time as the soldering. I should really get a better camera, I can zoom in maybe, but <laughs> I'm stuck with just my phone as it is right now. What I'll do, I'll solder this and then I'll give you another close up. I've got my tweezers knocking about, that might help. Right, so I've got to directly with the pad that I need it on, and I'm just applying a little bit of pressure. Stuck down. That seems a lovely job, I'm liking that, so focus, god damn it. Can you see directly above where the eight is? That's where this the other side's going to. So we've got from so my normal wire running to that which goes to the one side of the 330 ohm resistor, which then connects the circuit to the other side of the leg down there. And that's it, that's that's the macro mod if you don't want speakers. If you're prepared to use headphones on this point, you wouldn't have to go any further. You'd literally be good to go. I've done a bit of modification to my case, obviously, to make it so, you know, I can hide the DS slot because I didn't need it for mine. Actually, in this one, I actually cut the holes in the front, so it was meant, originally meant to have dual front-facing uh, front speakers and back-facing uh, speakers as well, but that didn't work out too well, <laughs> if you've seen in my previous videos. Right, so here we just need to put it back together again. So the screen's already in place, that's what this is there. Uh, here's our buttons, like A, B, X, Y and all that stuff. Uh, D-pad I think that is. That could be the way around. No, it's the D-pad, that's the D-pad. D-pad start and select I think that is. Alright, so let's get it back together again and see if it worked. I'm not 100% certain that it probably has worked, unless the resistor's bad or something. That's the only thing, thing I can think of that maybe it wouldn't work for. But let's stay hopefully. So the size I'm still at the moment still using, but that will be a thing I'll be altering very soon. Um that's it, I think we're good to go now. So I need to get the cables back in place. What I'll do, I'll put the screws back in place first so I don't lose track of them. Because that'll help me be more, you know, if it's a bit more sturdier when you come to inserting the cables and stuff, it, it well, you, as you know, if you repair game bars or anything. Uh, and if you watched my oh crap that did not help at all crap because I was not paying attention that not good not good at all well, it didn't go too far so I'm all good <laughs> so you've been tracking your screws and I'm gonna do that uh, anyway so as I was saying um I made a useful tool I think for um do you know the DS the Game Boy and the sorry the Game Boy 3DS the 2DS and the DSi slash DSi XL if you go back to my tool hack video, the one where I made for the out of a female USB and connected um you know the data the data plus data minus positive and negative to a, like a connection thing a connection thing for my multimeter, you know, to be able to check where what went to where on the board kind of thing. Well I made one for the DS and the thing is as well it's a really easy little tool to make because of the DS there's only two connections, you know, power and negative. So no data or anything to do. But the good thing about that is if you say fault checking, you know, looking for faults on the board. Like example, I don't know if you watched the My Mate Vince video and he's um you know going do 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 and he's checking like either side of the capacitors and fuses and stuff like that, you know. half of it like one side's meant to go to ground, but the other side isn't meant to go to ground. So if you've got a shark, which that's what it's called, and using a multimeter, that'd also that'd really help you, you know, to in other words, check all the capacitors and the fuses to see what if it's shot on both sides, maybe you can follow the path of where that leads to and you know, diagnose the fault or whatever. I've, I've not come to actually using it as a diagnosis yet, but I will, because I've got a couple of DSs that need, um, and another good thing to be for as well, is if you were to put a Type-C charger or a micro USB, it might come handy for that too, which again, I'll be doing in a future video, if you want to see that. I'm sure someone's already done that though, so, I mean, just type into YouTube. Probably just, if you can't find one for the actual macro, you want to look for one, for the DSi itself, and just, you know, like do it as for your console. Because it works exactly the same, I think. I'd assume so. <laughs> there goes the ice cream van. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Let's get this in. 
when I started filming this, there was like loads of light, and now it is pitiful to say the least. Oh crap, how's that going in? Hate these little ribbon cables. Let's get this big one out of the way first, that'll make it a bit easier. I'm guessing you don't need a close up of this, but what I'll do once I've put them all back in place, I'll show you. Oh yeah, as well, the little black screws, if you reassembling your boss track of where you have your screws easy way of remembering it is the black screws go into the ones with the white rings the tiny little black screw goes into this corner here next to the charge port obviously I don't know where these go obviously I've had to lose a couple myself you know so I could modify the housing but I'm assuming yours will be similar if not the same in regards to like layout of where they're meant to go and stuff yeah, that should be right for that. That's the digitizer in. That one in no trouble. Let's get this one up now. So these are really simple to do when you squeeze them, I'm not gonna lie. The, the, doing this by hand, unless you're some steady handed mofo, let's put it this way, it'd be very hard to do. But with tweezers, it's not too tricky. Alright, so now I just need to reconnect the power connector. We're very close to the end now. There's five more screws to assemble. We'll want to get the back back on that is. And voila! So I put the screws. Oh, we're not voila, we're not quite there just yet, are we? Not bon appetit in just yet. Right, so now let's get the back back on. I got your back. Right, so, uh, oh, I'll give you, I said I'll give you a close up then, I'm not going to give you. Oh no! Well, you can see there or not, but the things come loose again. No major big deal thing right now, because right now, before we get the back on, it can be fixed. Oh, crap. So I'll disconnect the power again because I don't want to get getting stung by the soldering iron, do we? So that's not good, but I've got my tweezers now, so hopefully we can rectify the situation quite quickly. What I'll do, I'll try and hold it in place and then I'll show you on the camera. Well, I'll, well in fact, what I'll do, that's it. What I'll do, I'll quickly give you a close up now so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see here. This wire, focus, god damn it. It's meant to go there where it's showing you in the camera now. But it's broke away, as you can see. So I need to reattach that. And then I'll show you again, just in case you weren't clear where you were soldering it to there. I'll give you another close up when I get it resoldered, which should only take a second, because it's literally a tiny little giant. Pain in my butt. Fair thing, we might cut the wire a little bit too short. It's not helping it. Yeah, I think I'll cut the wire a little bit too short, so I'll pull it out. The cable itself was gripping hold of it a little bit, you know, giving it a little pull. And that was in turn making it crap. There we go. Should do the trick. So we're good? Yeah, we're good. Whew. Good job of noticing that we're back together again. If you can focus, focus. See again now, if you look here. See the connection, it's re-established, it's now Reconnected. Nothing to stand up to get to the camera, I'm too sharp. <laughs> right, so this bit now we need to connect this bit here to this connector, which is kind of a bit of a pain in the butt, but it's doable. What I'd suggest you do is I get under it like that and I come at it kind of like a buck kind of thing. I reckon it's easier to get to if you come at it from the, net, the, the shallower side. Well, I say that and then struggle like a mofo. I'm saying mofo because <laughs> it's. I'm always biting my tongue, trying not to swear, so. Go off, way in it. Oh my god, I said this would be easier and then it's totally not easier. I'm gonna try it this way. So, obviously, I can't show you this because from the angle it's at, it's literally impossible to. Straight away, oh my god, that. That was. Ooh, that was a close one. I don't know if I was reconnect the power. That was, an, that was a mishap waiting to happen, wasn't it? 
Mm. So right, so that's reconnected now, straight away. So that's what I'm saying, sometimes it can take ages to connect it, and other times it can be just like, oh my god, I'm a ninja. <laughs> I think everything should just clip that together now. But it doesn't want to, obviously, something's stopping it. Crap, there's something I forgot. This, we don't want a real boot about it, do we? It probably will, but I mean, there's no point in taking on a service, is there? Like I said, I want to show you it working, so attempt number two to close. That screen's aligned. Look good there. Look good there. Why is that gripping there proper for some reason? Why is it not gripping? Why are you not fastening, bugger? Mm. Oh crap. <sighs> Pry tool it is. My wounded pry tool. Something's stopping it around there. It should only take a second to adjust. Obviously, if you have your own, your own mileage will vary, whatever, you probably a bit more luck than I have had. I'm trying to rush this, so. Obviously, like I said. Hmm, so it's stopping you. Is that maybe? I don't think it is that. So what's stopping you from closing? I'm sorry if my head's in the way of here. <laughs> uh, is it just unluckiness? I'm just... I'm in clicks and stuff, but it's not seem to be staying in place. What the hell? Go, together. This is not satisfying, really crunching. <laughs> Why aren't you fastening? I don't understand. Again, bleeding pry tool. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Let's get these screws. Oh, crap, that's going done now anyway. Uh, bugger. Right, so back to the drawing board, right? What's up on in there then? Why aren't you closing? Is it that? That catching on that maybe? Surely not. That's what it is. Oh god damn it. Alright, so there's the problem. Alright. Um Well the power power on without that. But does, does it need this to power on? Do you know? I'm I'm assuming maybe, but let's just see if I was right then. <coughs> let's see if I can get it working for me, because I've buggered up obviously, and I don't want it to be a failed video, so the only option at this point is to try and turn it on as is now. So, <laughs> that seems to be the way the battery goes in, so what we'll do, got the screws in there, I'll hold it in place, like so. So as you know, obviously, I'm, I'm gonna have to, like I said, I'm going to have to redesign this anyway, but I'll, what I'll do, I'll redesign it, I'll come back, I'll, this always is part one of a part two video. If you want to come back and see how I redesign it, if I'm right, this should all turn on now, because this tricks the top, the, the thing to think in the top screen's connected, yeah? Let's just hope it doesn't need the... Trigger buttons connecting the other two to turn on because that would be crap. If it turns on now, I'm right. If it doesn't, I'm still right. It just means that you might need that to turn it on. Well, it's a fail video in that scenario, <laughs> and I wasted 25 minutes of your life. I'm sorry. Let's see. Yes, yes. Right, as you can see, it's not flicking off. Uh, it's doing this right now because it's hacked and I've not got my memory card in it, so it's. Not recognizing that it's you know it's what what the hell's me data man I ain't got no data but it's obviously I've got that on the memory card there to precisely the memory card in that but as you can see the thing's staying on so this proves this works and there's no trickery or anything involved I literally I'm holding the battery in place there at the back and oh, you can see that and that holding back in place still on which I'll I'll, I'll release the battery and it turns off straight away so that's it uh, obviously I'm gonna like I said have to re visit this. Uh, if you want to see the process of it happening, the design of it, and then me installing it, I'll do that if you want, but obviously, like I said, it's not like a major redesign or anything, it's just like a support of kind of sorts. But I do think I could do better, I do think I could do a lot better to be honest with you. This was meant to be the redesign of it, where I was going to you know, feed a little bit more wire through so it'd be a little bit more structural integral. But again, I'm going to have the issue with this art, so I need to put it somewhere, maybe around here or something. 
what well, do something that comes and zigzags around there or something maybe yeah i can definitely do something with that 100 percent. so it worked it just unfortunately it won't close up because of the well, let me show you all right so it goes on like that so this button here sorry this compartment here this is for the memory card because this is too bulky you know because it's a res the, the hourglass resistors rather than the oh you can see oh is that going to focus on that but you see in, t in them tiny little speckles inside here these are 330 ohm resistors as well this is just like the smd equivalent of it uh yeah i think they're called ceramic these ones i'm not too sure i, I can't call them hourglasses but you, you could probably know what they're called <laughs> all right thanks for watching i'll see you next time uh bye